Good morning, everyone. Mr. Chairman, thank you so much for the kind words in your introductory remarks. I am honored to be invited by the Vehicle Design Technical Committee to deliver the 2022 William F. Milliken Award Lecture. This lecture is to pay tribute to Mr. Milliken for his pioneering contributions to road vehicle dynamics, including race car dynamics. The lecture today is, however, not in the area of road vehicle dynamics, but in a parallel field of off-road vehicle mobility. The title of my presentation is Off-Road Mobility and Turn Mechanics Theory to Practice. Why moving people and goods by vehicles on paved roads is a significant part of the transportation network. A wide range of human endeavors such as farming, mining, construction, logging, defense operations, and planetary surface exploration involves locomotion over unprepared terrain. Deformable terrains such as desert sand, soft mud, musky, and snow often impose severe limitations on vehicle mobility. The photo on the left shows the immobilization of a truck vehicle in musket. The photo on the right shows the immobilization of a wheel vehicle in soft mud. The immobilization of NASA's Mars Exploration Rover Spirit in a soft patch on the Martian surface in 2009 highlights the importance of mobility in planetary surface exploration as well. The photo on the left shows the immobilization of spirit on the Martian surface. The photo on the right shows NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory uses a test bed to explore ways to free the rover. In the past, owing to a lack of understanding of terrain behavior and the mechanics of vehicle terrain interaction, the evaluation of vehicle mobility has been guided by empirical methodology. As the understanding of the physical nature of vehicle terrain interaction evolves, physics-based models for evaluating vehicle mobility have been Develop. The study of the mechanics of vehicle machine terrain interaction has now become known as terrain mechanics. The term was coined by Dr. Becker and introduced to the subtitle of his book, Of the Road Locomotion Research and Development in Terra Mechanics. This book was published by the University of Michigan Press in 1960. Together with his other two books, Theory of Land Locomotion of 1956 and Introduction to Terrain Vehicle Systems of 1969, Dr. Becker's three books laid the foundation for this novel branch of applied mechanics, term mechanics. In this photo, Dr. Becker is shown in the middle. On the left is Dr. Aaron Rees, who was the first president of the International Society for Terrain Vehicle Systems and the founding editor of Journal of term mechanics. He was also my research advisor when I was studying 
at the University of Newcastle upon Tyne in England. This photograph was taken at a professional development program on vehicle mobility held in Ottawa, Canada in 1978. The contents of my presentation include basic issues in turn mechanics, turn mechanics models for truck and wheel vehicle mobility, applications of turn mechanics to the study of extraterrestrial rover mobility, next generation on NATO reference mobility model, and Closing remarks. Basic issues in turn mechanics, including measurement and characterization of terrain behavior, analysis of vehicle terrain interaction, and modeling of vehicle mobility in various operating environments. Measurement of terrain behavior. An off-road vehicle applies normal load to the terrain surface, resulting in sinkage and motion resistance. The torque applied to the sprocket or tire initiate shearing action on the vehicle terrain interface and results in the development of thrust. To determine terrain properties relevant to vehicle mobility, a device was developed by Dr. Becker to measure the pressure sinkage and sharing characteristics of the terrain, which has now become known as the Becker meter or the Becker value meter. Pever meter pressure single test. In this photo, the pever meter shown in red is mounted in front of a vehicle which can be driven to locations where one would like to conduct tests. This photo shows a pressure single test on a musket. The play is to simulate the contact area of a tire or a track link. Force is applied to the plate, causing it to sink into the terrain. By monitoring the force and the sinkage of the plate, the pressure sinkage relation of the terrain can be obtained. This figure shows a representative pressure sinkage relation of a musket. The musket usually has a map of living vegetation on the top with the composed peat below it. The pressure initially increases with sinkage. It reaches a maximum where the surface mat is broken up. Afterwards, the pressure decreases with the increase of sinkage. A model is developed to characterize the pressure sinkage relationship of musket. In the model, the surface mat is idealized as a membrane supported by vertical pressure from the underlying peak. This dashed line represents the pressure sinkage relationship of the musket derived from this model. This figure shows the response of musket to a repetitive normal loading. This information is important for predicting the performance of multi-axle wheel vehicles or truck vehicles with a series of row wheels. A method is developed to characterize the terrain response to repetitive loading. Bevermeter shared tests. This photo shows the Bevermeter shared test set up. A shared ring will be given normal load 
is used in the test. By rotating the shear ring and by monitoring the torque and angular displacement of the shear ring, the shear stress shear displacement relationship of the terrain can be determined. This figure shows the shear stress shear displacement relationship of a musky mat. Initially, the shear stress increases with shear displacement. The shear stress reaches a maximum where the surface mat is being sheared off. Afterwards, the shear stress decreases with shear displacement. A model is developed to characterize the relationship as shown by the dashed line. The sharing characteristics are important for predicting vehicle thrust slip relationship. For measuring the internal sharing characteristics, the sharing is equipped with grousers to ensure sharing taking place within the terrain material. For predicting the performance of rubber tires or rubber pads of a trapped vehicle, the sharing is covered with rubber like that for the tires or the rubber pads of a track. For predicting vehicle belly drag due to belly terrain interaction, the sharing is covered with the material like that for the vehicle belly. Characterization of terrain behavior. Terrain behavior measured by the barometer described previously may be characterized by the back of wall terrain parameters, which have been adopted in the 2020 International Society for Terrain Vehicle System Standards, Section 2.2.3. For details, one can refer to this reference. They include pressure sinkage parameters, terrain internal sharing parameters, rubber terrain sharing parameters for rubber tires, rubber traps, or traps with rubber pads, vehicle belly or how terrain sharing parameters for predicting vehicle belly drag when the track sinkage is greater than vehicle ground clearance, and the repetitive normal and shear loading parameters for characterizing multi-pass effects on terrain properties. NTVPM, a terrain mechanics model for track vehicle performance. For truck vehicles, such as military vehicles, with short pitch link tracks or rubber belt tracks, the track is modeled as a flexible and extensible belt. NTVPM can be used to predict the performance of single unit or two unit articulated vehicles. The focus is on the prediction of normal pressure and shear stress distributions on the track terrain interface from which vehicle performance can be predicted for a given terrain. NTVPM input terrain data. Bigger one terrain parameters are used. Representative values of terrain parameters for various type of terrain may be found in the references indicated here. NTVPM vehicle input data, including sprung weight, unsprung weight, trap row wheel system configuration, such as number of row wheels, row wheel dimensions, and spacing, and so on. 
arrangements for the sprocket at the front or the rear, idler and supporting roller for the upper run of the track. Suspension characteristics as they affect the road distribution among road wheels and vehicle belly attitude. And vehicle belly shape as it affects belly terrain interaction when track sinkage is greater than ground clearance. A sample of vehicle design features considered in NTVPM. NTVPM can accommodate various types of row wheel independent suspension system, including torsion bar suspension, hydropneumatic suspension, and translational spring suspension. The suspension settings will affect the low distribution among row wheels and vehicle body or belly attitude. If the vehicle belly is in contact with the terrain, then a nose-up attitude will make the belly acting like a bulldozer, which will induce significant belly drag. Also, the belly will support a portion of the vehicle weight, resulting in less load supported by the track. On frictional terrain, this will reduce the thrust that the track system can develop. NTVPM takes into account the effects of track link contact geometry on normal pressure distribution. Track longitudinal stiffness is also taken into consideration. This figure shows the track longitudinal elongation as a function of track tension for a track with rubber bushings. Track elongation affects the normal pressure distribution on the track and in turn track sinkage and performance. NTVPM output data. This figure shows the NTVPM control center as it appears on the computer screen. One can use this control center to input vehicle design parameters and terrain parameters. These four figures indicate the output of NTVPM for the predicted performance. This figure indicates the normal pressure distribution under the track predicted by NTVPM. And this figure shows the predicted shear stress distribution under the track. There are two curves. One is to represent the shear stress distribution on the rubber pads. The other one represents the shear stress developed by the internal shearing of terrain. This figure shows the relationship between the thrust and slip and the predicted drawbar pull as a function of slip. This table summarizes the thrust, total external motion resistance, drawbar pull, and tractive efficiency at different slips. NTVPM experimental substantiation. Field tests were conducted using two vehicles to evaluate the predictive capability of NTVPM. These two vehicles were provided by the Canadian Department of National Defense. One vehicle is an armored personal carrier with short pitch link tracks 
in addition to measure each rubber performance, transducers were mounted on each rubber pad and other parts of the link trap to monitor the normal pressure distribution under the trap during tests for comparing with that predicted by NTVPM. The other vehicle is a two-unit articulated vehicle with rubber tracks. Again, transducers were mounted on various locations of the rubber trap to monitor the normal pressure distribution under the trap during tests. Correlations between predictions and test data. These three figures show the correlations of test data with predicted drawbar performances by NTVPM for the armored personal carrier test vehicle on sand, on muskeg, and on snow. The solid line in this figure represents the predicted drawbar pull slip relationship using the mean values of the measured trend parameters. The two dashed lines represent the predicted drawbar pull slip relationship using the mean value plus and minus one standard deviation of the measured trend parameters. These three figures show the correlations of test data with predicted normal pressure distributions under the trap by NTVPM for the armored personal carrier test vehicle on sand, on muskeg, and on snow. These figures show that there are reasonable correlations between predictions and measured data. Consequently, it can be said that the basic features of NTVPM have been experimentally substantiated. Applications of NTVPM to product development. With the basic features of NTVPM being experimentally substantiated, it has been employed to assist vehicle manufacturers in product development or improvement. Some of the examples are given below. NTVPM has been employed to assist Hicklin's vehicle AB, now BAE Systems, Hicklin's AB of Sweden, in development or improvement of its products. In 2001, Hicklin's acquired a license for NTVPM from Vehicle Systems Development Corporation. Hicklin's has since been continually using NTVPM for product development and improvement. Hicklin's is the developer and manufacturer of CV90 family of armored vehicles and BV206 family of articulated vehicles. CV90 has been operated in seven nations, including four NATO members. BV206 has been used in 25 countries, including the United States and Canada. NTVPM has also been employed to assist the Spanish company Santa Barbara in the development of a high mobility version of the armored vehicle Escort. It stands for Austrian Spanish Cooperative Development, leading to the production of Pizarro in Spain and Ulane in Austria, as shown in this photo. 
the Spanish and Austrian companies are now divisions of General Dynamics European Land Systems. A variant known as Ajax is produced by General Dynamics UK as shown in this photo. NWVPM, a term mechanics model for wheel vehicle performance. NWVPM includes the following features. First, a time model that predicts its operating mode, rigid or flexible. For a rigid mode of operation, the tire behaves like a rigid wheel. In other words, if the tire inflation pressure plus the pressure due to carcass stiffness is greater than a critical pressure called BGCR, then the tire will behave like a rigid wheel. The critical pressure PGCR is a function of terrain pressure sinkage parameters and normal load and dimensions of the wheel. For flexible operating mode, the tire deforms with a flattened ground contact area, as shown in this diagram. In other words, if the tire inflation pressure plus the pressure due to carcass stiffness is less or equal to the critical pressure, then the tire will behave like a flexible wheel. In NTVPM, appropriate methods have been developed for predicting the sinkage, motion resistance, and thrust of the tire in both rigid and flexible modes. For a vehicle with two or more drive axles with succeeding tires running in the ruts formed by the preceding tires, the response of the terrain to repetitive normal and shear loading is considered in predicting the performance of succeeding tires. The dynamic load transfer between axles due to drawbar pull, grade, and so on is considered. Effects of axle suspension stiffness on dynamic load distribution among axles are considered. NWVPM, correlations between predictions and test data. This figure shows the predicted drawbar pool slip relationship of a tractor on a plow field. Those represents the measured data points. This figure shows the predicted drawbar pull slip relationship for the tractor on a stubble field. The measured data are shown here. The two curves shown in each of the two figures represent those predicted using the upper and lower bounds of measured terrain parameters. The two figures show that there are close correlations between the measured drawbar performance of a tractor and the predicted by NWVPM. Consequently, it can be said the basic features of NWVPM have been experimentally substantiated. Applications of NWVPM to evaluating the performance of flexible wheels for the lunar rowing vehicle. To assess the potential of NWVPM for evaluating the mobility of future generations of extraterrestrial rovers with flexible wheels, a study was performed in collaboration with NASA's Glenn Research Center. NWVPM was used to predict 
the performances of two flexible wheel candidates for the manned lunar roving vehicle for the Apollo missions 15, 16, and 17. One of the candidates is Boeing GM Y mesh wheel, shown here. The other candidate is the Bendix hoop spring wheel, as shown in this diagram. Predictions by NWVPM are compared with test results obtained in the lab by the U.S. Army Waterways Experiment Station for NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. For further information, one can refer to this reference. In this table, wheel type is given in this column. Normal load is given in this column. It should be noted, for instance, for the Boeing GM wheel, the normal load here is 311 newtons. This is scale to the lunar gravity, which is one sixth of that on Earth. Contact pressure is given in this column. Predicted drawbar pull at 20% sleep normalized with the normal load on the wheel is given in this column. Measured drawbar pull at 20% sleep normalized with the normal load is given in this column. The ratio of the predicted value to the measured value in percentage is given in this column. For instance, for the Boeing GM wheel, the ratio is 108.1%, which represents that the predicted value is 8.1% above the measured. For Bendix 1 wheel, the ratio is 87.7% which represents that the predicted value is approximately 12% below the measured one. Based on the data shown in this table, one can say the correlations between the measured and predicted are considered reasonable. The capability of NWVPM to predict flexible rover wheel performance is substantiated. Predicting rover performance on extraterrestrial surfaces based on test results obtained on Earth. It is desirable to test rover performance under the gravity of extraterrestrial surface where the rover will be deployed. This is, however, difficult to perform on the Earth's surface. In current practice, to evaluate the rover performance on the Moon, for instance, tests are conducted on Earth with the normal force applied by the rover to the regolith simulan at one-sixth of that on Earth. It should be noted, however, that the simulant during the test is still subject to Earth gravity G and not the gravity 1 6th G on the Moon surface. This raises the question whether the results so obtained represent that on the Moon surface. In term mechanics, there is a basic equation for predicting pressure sinkage relationship of terrain that considers the effects of gravity G, known as the Ries equation. In this equation, P 
is pressure. C and gamma are cohesion and mass density of the terrain respectively. Kc prime, K5 prime, and N are non-dimensional terrain parameters. G is gravity. B is wheel contact width and Z is a sinkage. The pressure sinkage relationship of the terrain is used for predicting wheel sinkage and motion resistance. On most known extraterrestrial surfaces, the surface is dry and primarily exhibits frictional behavior. Consequently, the cohesion of C in above pressure sink equation may be assumed to be zero. Based on a turn mechanics analysis with an identical wheel or rover mass on the Earth's surface and on the extraterrestrial surface, the following relationships are established. For further information, one can refer to this reference. Equation one in the case that the ratio of the wheel sinkage on an extraterrestrial surface to that on the Earth's surface is equal to one. Equation two in the case that the ratio of the wheel motion resistance on extraterrestrial surface to that on the Earth's surface is equal to the gravity ratio, that is GEx over GE. Equation one in the case that with an identical wheel, a rover mass on the Earth's surface and on the extraterrestrial surface, the sinkage of the wheel, a rover, on any extraterrestrial surface will be equal to that on the Earth's surface. Equation two in the case that with an identical wheel or rover mass on the Earth's surface and on the extraterrestrial surface, the ratio of the wheel or rover motion resistance on any extraterrestrial surface RCX to that on the Earth's surface RCE will be equal to the gravity ratio, GEx over GE. To substantiate the analytical findings, that is, equations one and two, test results obtained using a wheel running in a soil bin in an aircraft under parabolic flying maneuvers to create various gravity conditions are used. For details, one can refer to these two references. This figure shows the path of an aircraft under parabolic flight maneuvers. This graph shows the corresponding variation of the gravity experienced by the test setup in the aircraft. Correlations between predictions and test results obtained from parabolic flight maneuvers. This figure shows the effects of gravity ratio on sink ratio with identical mass carried by the rover wheel on Earth and on extraterrestrial surfaces. According to equation one, Sinkage ratio is independent of gravity ratio, so it is represented by the horizontal dashed line. Measure the data on two soils with two relative densities are shown by different symbols and different lines. This figure shows the effects of gravity ratio on the wheel motion resistance ratio with identical mass. 
according to equation two, the motion resistance ratio is equal to the gravity ratio. So it is represented by this inclined dash line. Measure the data are represented by different symbols and different lines in this figure. The correlations between the predicted and measured sinkage ratio and motion resistance ratio versus gravity ratio on various types of terrain with different levels of relative density are considered reasonable. Correlations between predictions by equations 1 and 2 and by discrete element method DEM with test results. Predictions by DEM are from this reference. This table shows comparisons of predictions by equation 1 and by DEM with test data. At gravity ratio 1.6, the wheel sinkage ratio predicted by the discrete element method is 1.08, um, equation 1 is 1, and we do not have sufficient and reliable measured data for this. At gravity ratio 3 quarters, wheel sinkage ratio predicted by DEM is 1.01, .01, from equation one is one, from measured data is 1.02. At gravity ratio two, wheel sinkage ratio predicted by DEM is 1.02. From equation one is one, from measured data is 0.98. This table shows comparisons or predictions by equation two and by DEM with test data. At gravity ratio one six, the wheel motion resistance ratio from DEM is 0.12, from equation two is 0.166, from measured data is 0.15. At gravity ratio three quarters, Wheel motion resistance ratio from DEM is 0.81, from equation 2 is 0.75, from measured data is 0.79. At gravity ratio of 2 from DEM, the wheel motion resistance ratio is 1.97, from equation 2 is 2, from measured data is 2.13. From these two tables, we can say equations one and two are substantiated by DEM and test results. They will provide guidance for future testing of rover wheels and rovers. Next generation NATO reference mobility model. The NATO reference mobility model, NRMM, first released in 1979, has been used in the United States and other NATO countries for predicting vehicle mobility over specified terrains. It is an empirical based simulation model. NATO standard AMSP-06 released in 2021 provides a guidance for standards applicable to the development of the next generation NATO reference mobility model or NGNRMM. It defines NGNRMM to be any mobility modeling and simulation tools that include 
Geographic Information System Software, 3D Physics Space Vehicle Dynamics, Turn Mechanics Models for Off-Road Operations, Autonomous Control Software, Uncertainty Quantification Software. In Annex F of NATO Standard AMSP-06, the input terrain and vehicle data of NTVPM and the correlations between vehicle performance predicted by NTVPM and test data presented earlier are included as the NGNRMM chart vehicle benchmark data. Closing remarks. Since the founding of term mechanics more than six decades ago, efforts in research and development in the field have transformed theory into engineering practice to improve predictions of vehicle mobility on terrestrial terrain and extraterrestrial regulative. To guide the development and design of new products and to inspire innovation in terrestrial vehicles and extraterrestrial rovers. And to provide guidance for future testing of rover wheels and rovers. This is a list of references referred to in the presentation. Thank you for your attention.